and we are live good time of day everyone this episode is sponsored by no one nobody and nothing except mental toughness and on top fitness check out this excellent project local to rhode island they gave me this excellent t-shirt that fuels my performance today in general and i'm very happy about this t-shirt and the philosophy provided by on top fitness in general check them out resources will be coming out soon or links and information how is it going wahab oh beautifully thank you all like always pleasure to be here excellent news glad to hear that okay so um yeah this uh, week just like any other week i would say was full of challenges and uh, that got me thinking so since we live in this challenging life so what can we do to uh, kind of like ease our dealing with challenges how can we get more accustomed to facing those challenges on a regular basis and just being okay with that work through them and achieve success so that's what we are going to focus today on absolutely it may sound dumb what i'm gonna say but the way to just overcome challenges is to simply do more challenging things oh yeah like that right. sounds crazy yeah yeah so yeah just like for example at some point in our lives maybe it was not so difficult to not so, i mean not so easy to walk right so but right now we can just walk around in general more or less like finally right so of course yeah if let's say you have maybe like sore legs after the squat then yeah walking yeah became uh, <laughs> problematic so that was my case last week for instance or maybe i had some mini injury uh, in my leg the other i don't know year or something then yeah the walking was very challenging but yeah if we consider kind of uh, just a general situation then yeah uh, it eventually is kind of like not too bad so and uh, what also we can think about like speaking of like wahab's regularity proposal there exists such a thing as called ex exposure that's what i heard the other day from another kind of science uh podcast so they were talking there about the deliberate cold exposure that will kind of make you more accustomed to uh cold uh, right as one of the outcomes and then also it will kind of like or can make your health better if of course it is kind of executed in the like correct uh, fashion right so and then that got me thinking so since we uh, share with you guys here the results of our uh, life experiments so what we what if we decide to set up the experiment like so uh, expose ourselves to various challenges on a kind of daily basis maybe not seven days a week right so give yourself some rest uh, on the weekend uh, or but still i would expose myself maybe five days a week monday to friday to some sort of challenges or a challenge one challenge a day keeps fear away we might say definitely yeah and when it comes to challenge exposure like sometimes it is tough for us to admit that oh we may be lacking in an area right we may need improvement in let's say social skills but then we sometimes very rarely get outside opportunities to let's say address that issue of social anxiety but then what Example. happens is yeah. you know we can find situations to purposely put ourselves in that makes us uncomfortable so for oh, example yeah. it would be making small talk but not with you know a random person in the street because sometimes they just be like you know hey who are you yeah that's right it's it's a good idea to start with some sort of controlled environment actually i have one example so that kind of like brings me back to 
uh, making small talks in English to study or to learn and practice the language. And then what I did is that uh, I went to the so-called conversation club, where for a small fee, people of the like, same interests who were sharing the same goal of improving their in English language skills were gathering, let's say, every Tuesday or something like that uh, in some sort of cafeteria or restaurant, whatever it was, right, where it was possible to like eat, drink some tea and talk. So and then they were practicing the... Uh, skills the speaking skills speaking and listening skills i would say of the language so like a couple hours every week so that was a good thing and then eventually it became very easy to uh, speak at least in that environment with some number of people maybe like 10 or 20 or something like that uh split into small groups but it was uh, a big progress compared to the starting point for me when I was very anxious to speak English even to one person who was also not a native speaker uh, even. So, yeah, and uh, yeah, that was that was a very big challenge. But then eventually it was a huge difficulty, but eventually it became easy to speak English language, right? Or the English language within a group of several people kind of relatively easily without the feeling of palpitations in the in the chest caused by heart yeah you get that feeling in the back of your head that just tells you oh is what i just said right am i speaking correctly yeah oh no am i awkward and then what happens right. is we get these spirals and it doesn't even have to fall into language or social interactions it can fall into any category that exists in this planet where we as humans have to apply ourselves into that can be challenging. And like even languages, for example, yeah, or yeah. just speaking and social interaction, it can be as small as, you know, making small talk when you order your coffee and you just grab your coffee, just be like, make very minimum small talk, like ask for the time. You know, what happens is, these exposures not so much like huge exposures but just micro exposures start to ease us it makes us feel calmer and easier exactly. because if you know let's say we've never done like a specific let's use cooking for example yeah great just one. pulling that off the top of my head if you've never cooked anything in your life but then you suddenly decide i want to try one of gordon ramsay's recipes yeah hopefully without him in the back cussing at me if i screw something up and then you're gonna be overwhelmed because you see all these ingredients you don't know what comes where what temperature the stove should yeah. be on how long you have to cook the chicken for you know and there's only so much that you can do before you just fall into a, what's that word I'm looking for paralysis by analysis because we right. just see so many factors and we're like what do I do oh no it's overwhelming oh is it gonna be better if I try it this way oh no I think it's gonna be better if I do it that way oh but if I do it that way I might screw up and then we just get these thoughts that race around our heads and then eventually nothing gets done. We sit in the same spot pre-challenge exposure. So a great way to do that is to keep it simple. Start beginner level. Yeah. Like if you're Start learning small. a language. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. So that kind of uh, goes to, I think, in my opinion, to like two vectors. So that's starting small, right? So I would concur here. And then also I would uh, uh, emphasize my own kind of like experimentation, right? So yeah, if I, uh, when I was uh, undertaking some sort of uh, beginning, whatever it might be, maybe I wanted to become better at uh, photography and videography, right? At some point. 
saw that was maybe my hobby, right? And then before we launched this podcast, which also involves kind of elements of videography, photography, and then uh, working with the sound using a better microphone than the inbuilt one. So yeah, I was uh, tending to overwhelm myself. So maybe uh, I was overly ambitious about Sandra. Maybe it's kind of the natural tendency of the people to kind of uh, try to be maximalists, right? Uh, along the lines, especially of something that they like, right? And then they will be like, okay, I'm going to buy this gear and then that piece and then some sort of book and sign up for some sort of course. But then you kind of overwhelm yourself. You spend too much money, uh, too much time, and then nothing gets done. So even if you like it and you don't feel kind of any particular fear of this uh, activity, right? So, and then in this case, it's kind of like important not to overwhelm yourself and then just uh, sort of like in my case, I was trying to deliberately uh, slow myself down and then say, okay, well, I'm going to start uh, with a small piece related to this new project uh, or I could have uh, applied it. I also was applying it to facing various and working with various challenges. Start small, right? If it were, for example, let's say talking to the people, right? And then socialization uh, in general, then yeah, you can, uh, for example, I was exposing myself to, uh, let's say, asking uh, people the what time it is, right? Uh, every day for five days during a particular week, like Monday to Friday, right? Then I would give myself some break on Saturday and Sunday. And then I could build a little bit more next week, right? Maybe it's going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, when I uh, talk to some sort of like random people and just greet them and then ask about them uh, their day or something like that. So yeah, and eventually I would sort of uh, graduate and progress towards uh, being at some sort of social events and greeting perhaps maybe like five people, right? Uh, out of the large number of participants of this particular social event, talk to them, make a small talk about, let's say their week, uh, who they are and stuff like that. If it was a networking event, for example. So yeah, and eventually kind of like those social interactions kind of like stop being a challenge. And uh, I was just getting into the routine of interacting socially with uh, different people, large numbers, maybe on a daily basis or weekly uh, basis, small groups, large groups. So that was not challenging. That became more like a habit uh, from which I could build and develop, let's say, my networking skills to kind of like find people to work with on this particular podcast, for example. So yeah, maybe... This podcast was a result to some extent of yeah overcoming the challenge of social interactions and developing connections that yielded this project. Amazing. And even what you said, like that aspect, it reminded me of like trying to learn French because I took it in high school. Oh yeah. And then it was just like two to three years, just abandoned it, like stopped practicing. And then I wanted to get back into it because I believe learning languages are really important. So re-registered for like a college course, tried to take French again. And just witnessing the beginning and introduction of learning a language, it makes you click that this can work with so much else. Because our teacher, for example, she would teach us a phrase. And let's say you'd start to learn really basic stuff like, hello, my name is. And then before we move on to the next part, our teacher would make sure that everyone was saying it right over and over again. Like, you just have a classroom full of 20 people yelling, hello, my name is. Hello, my name is. Hello, my name is all in French. And then when we got that right, she'd move on to the next part. Mm. And start to say, I okay. am from like wherever you are. And then we'd say that again and again. And eventually the repetition yes. just became like secondhand nature. It became very instinctive. Like I'm able to click, click, click. 
and just remember that really easily. But that didn't come just by looking at it once in a book and then saying, oh, okay, I got it. This is easy. You yeah. have to say it again and again. Even though we said it like 20 times, mm -hmm. we still, let's say, while saying it for the 10th time, thinking, oh, this is really easy. I got this now. We still had to do it another 10 times, like say it, repeat it, write it down over and over again. To the point where that specific phrase no longer became a challenge. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of like internalize it and uh, it becomes a second nature if we were to use that kind of description. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's a good one. So yeah, that's uh, kind of like true about languages, right? So it's just a repetition uh, to the point that uh, it becomes natural to handle this repeated thing, right? And then it becomes kind of like the tool, right? In that case, the speaking tool, which you can use to just speak, let's say, uh, the French language and then communicate with the French uh, speaking individuals, for instance, right? So, um, yeah, uh, and uh, also in terms of sports, for example, we can also find this example there. So... Uh, many people, for example, like going to the gym, right? And uh, when they start, let's say just lifting a dumbbell. So that might as well be kind of a challenging uh, endeavor, right? So just to lift it maybe, uh, I don't know, like three times, right? So, okay, well, three times you are done. But then eventually, so maybe like you come in after some rest and recovery, maybe like two days later, right? Let's say you're on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, schedule, in the gym for, for the gym training and then you will lift it six times right just one set six repetitions so then friday it's going to be maybe again another set of six repetitions and then next week it becomes for instance maybe two sets six repetitions each and eventually you'll be able to do it uh, if you want up to maybe uh, five sets eight repetitions each something like that so this will not be a big deal to lift the dumbbell so it's just a temporal progression deliberate exposure to the challenge that is kind of split into those small bite-sized chunks and another thing i would add is the discipline so you just need to disciplinedly mm -hmm. go to the gym monday wednesday friday not skip and then you'll be free from the, let's say, from the pressure of this challenge or something, right? No wonder they say discipline is freedom. Discipline is the most solid foundation to any structure, I think, that we try to build as individuals. Like, if you're disciplined, you have the most solid foundation. And there's so much that can be built off of that. Indeed. And I'm glad you mentioned discipline because. It reminded me again of the movie Limitless that we did a podcast on before on optimizing oh, yeah. workspace. I still need to watch it once again. <laughs> you should right. watch it. It's amazing. Th that movie, especially the way it progresses, yeah, is outstanding. Like we mentioned before, the first thing he did was optimize his workspace, was optimize and clean his environment. Oh, yeah. Oh, what he did next Big in the movie was you see him become an individual. You see how he moves from like a depressed, uh, like just a mess in general, how he takes it, scrapes it off, and then just does everything he feared. He even oh, described yeah. like before he would overthink social interactions. Right. Like he'd think, oh, and it's not just the movie. Like we tend to do that as well. For example, in a social situation, sometimes we think, oh, this other person is judging me. Are they thinking about what I'm saying? Yes. Did what I say is right. Uh, am I awkward? And then mm -hmm. we just keep thinking like that. But these thoughts tend to show. Like sometimes someone's just really anxious. 
prevents themselves from engaging further when at 99% of the time, even the other person can be feeling the exact same way. And in the movie, we see him like clean up, get himself together. But then afterwards, we just see him going all over the place. And he narrates it as he goes along. He says, I used to be very socially anxious, Mm -hmm. but now all of that's gone. And realistically, there isn't a pill that we take that activates 100% of our brain and makes us remember every detail we took in our life. But in a realistic manner, we can see that he repeatedly goes out of his way. He goes to many coffee shops, environments where he's surrounded by people. Right. And he just engages with them. And even his conversations didn't even sound like your typical, hi, how's your day going? How's the weather? No, Mm -hmm. he's engaged in funny, outside-the-box conversations. Oh, Like stuff you don't normally hear. And I just think that's amazing. Because after we see him do that, we see him, you know, doing like a brief exercise montage. We see him getting everything else in his life that progressively goes on and on in the movie that will hopefully cover in the future. But that's simply done just by picking one thing, focusing, and then trying to do your best at it. And that even reminds me when... I tried to learn guitar. I have absolutely no musical talent whatsoever. I'll pick up an instrument and just like be terrible at it. But I used my younger brother's guitar, went to YouTube, tried to find a song that just sounds really cool that I like. And then I think I spent maybe a week to be able to play the first 10 seconds of the song, but really badly and really slow. So Mm. it's just like terrible. And then my younger brother, who for some reason has like a really good musical talent, he just picks up the guitar, listens to the whole song just once. And is like, okay, "Okay, uh, repeat that again. Repeat it. He listens to it. Plays just like a few random strings or chords or whatever you call it in a guitar. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Gets the feel of the instrument, okay. (laughs) Gets a feel of it, Uh stares blankly, and then proceeds to play the whole song. Oh, wow. And just sit there like... Fascinating. Yeah, You know what? Take the guitar. I don't want it anymore. (laughs) Yeah. Great. So, well, Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, this uh, requires uh, some experimentation. And then, yeah, you will see who can do what. So that does happen. That does happen. Yeah, well, that that is... uh, uh tremendous so uh, yeah and then once we kind of like approach those challenges right so we also need to keep in mind so yeah we need to be disciplined uh here just like what we uh kind of like see in our particular uh examples for instance what can i do what can i draw from my kind of like let's say recent life uh, of mine right so uh that could be for instance uh coaching right so coaching of jiu-jitsu uh, for instance so yeah that's something that i wanted to do but i also felt uh, it was a big challenge for me i was scared and afraid and fearing this all those kind of like negative things right that you might uh think about uh they were true uh, about the coaching of jiu-jitsu in my case so but then i enrolled into this uh, coaching course right it's, it was called the instructors uh, coaching course in our uh, academy by the way shout out to elevate judo and jiu-jitsu in exeter rhode island and the second location in portsmouth rhode island so please check out this academy uh, if you want to train uh, ufc uh, and actually, seriously speaking, judo and jiu-jitsu, which are used in UFC in particular and other promotions, right? So great sports overall, UFC uh, aside, 
and other promotions. But anyway, so uh, part of that uh, process was that um, we I had to show the disciplined approach to this training of how to become uh, a coach of the entry level one, right? Rather in Jiu Jitsu. And then we had to make, for example, videos, right? So short video clips of us, the participants of this course, demonstrating the teaching uh, and instructing of some technique, coaching of some technique to other participants of the course that were pretending to be, let's say, just uh, students, right, of uh, the uh, art. And we also had to demonstrate the particular technique um, in at hand or in question ourselves, right, and record it, to, record it on the camera, then show it to other people, participants of this course, things like that, and then get some constructive or destructive criticism. So I didn't care at that point. So I just wanted to get the input. And that was very good, even if it was, let's say, yeah, uh, uncomfortable. Maybe there was some fear involved of being judged and assessed by other people. So, but it was uh, all good. Eventually, I was able to start sort of um, instructing other people, right? Helping them in their uh, journey of jiu-jitsu right and it was maybe uh, very also uh, at the beginning uh, scary to coach others maybe my voice was shaky uh, there was some brain fog and then I couldn't quite follow the plan right so but then eventually uh, those things became uh, tightened and uh, various aspects were more and more or they became a little bit more comfortable, right? Of course, I'm not kind of like the best uh, coach at this point I can be. Uh, and then the process is always uh, in the like, progression um, sort of uh, side of things, right? It's always growing and developing. So, but it, that's okay. That's how it is kind of uh, going with many things in life. So yeah, we should, we should not be stuck at some point and maintain it as we discussed earlier, but we should aim for the development of whatever we try to kind of uh, work on uh, in our lives, right? So uh, yeah, but yeah, there was fear, there was an anxiety, un uncomfortable uh, states, but with the discipline and this uh, small size um, pieces approach to the challenge, it was possible to manage this challenge and start becoming better, start developing um, along the lines of coaching of jiu-jitsu, uh, for, for instance, right? So that would be another experiment, the results of which I would like to disclose. How would you describe the difference between your very first day of coaching versus a day you would coach right now? Like, would you describe it as, you know, something that you're just really used to and at this point now a lesson you can teach is flows a lot smoother and then how would you compare to like your first day of teaching yeah that's a good question so uh, i think yeah the first uh, uh, days were uh, more on on kind of the uh, anxious uh, side and stressful side but did you feel anxious like at the beginning of the day like let's say if you had the morning class or like an afternoon class uh, okay yeah that's would right. you so feel that would like be that? Yeah. Uh, that would be the good uh, kind of like item there so because normally as we wake up turns out that we have kind of the rise in cortisol uh, hormone to my knowledge that's what kind of like helps you wake up and makes you uh, awake, right? So, but in my case, it would be maybe even a higher dose of cortisol. So, because I also kind of like had to think about, okay, what's going to come this morning or this day, whatever it might be, morning class, evening class, right? That uh, I was going to coach. So, and then I had kind of like the increased amount of cortisol caused by those other thoughts, right, of coaching, for example, and that was increasing my uh, anxiety, uh, starting from the very awakening moment. So, yeah, that was, that was pretty much uh, the case for some time, and I think it's like pretty natural about many undertakings that we try to tackle in our lives, um, but, uh, and then kind of the sessions were also 
kind of like maybe not very smooth right as i was saying maybe i was not kind of like fallen i was not following the plan right which i was uh setting so and then maybe there was some frustration and confusion right on the faces of the students that i could see but eventually those things uh, i was able to smooth them over and then yeah there was less frustration less confusion and then more let's say satisfaction with the like uh, training session results right so uh, and then that satisfaction and then uh, happiness that's what i wanted to kind of like deliver uh, to the participants of those training sessions right so i was making them better and then i was also becoming better uh, myself in this uh, particular uh, coaching vector so yeah that was kind of like uh, yeah, there was the improvement over time along many aspects. Of course, yeah, there are many aspects to improve uh, still. But yeah, as I was saying, that's how it's going to go. So yeah, I think there's going to be constant improvement as long as I put effort uh, into that. So it's a, such a vast area to improve. So just like many other areas in life, such as cooking, right? Doing science. Uh, research in let's say chemistry right and or pharmaceutical science or engineering whatever it might be so even even walking right you can like think about that and then still optimize your walking let's say the way you position your feet as you walk they shouldn't be like that as far as i kind of like heard from one of the uh exercise physiology book but it should be more like that so this angle should be kind of not more than 12 degrees or something so yeah um continuous improvement will will follow us improvement kind of like battle with an anxiety a little bit yeah that's awesome and even you'd say like the overall organization of let's say your teaching schedule like at the beginning you'd sort of think oh um these drills wouldn't work together hand in hand so like change the orientation of the drills and then teach a certain technique that would be really good foundation to teach like a following technique and that's something like you would pick up over time almost like you just figure out the best ways to teach like the best you can yeah, definitely. So there are, so to speak, uh, troughs and uh, peaks. Yeah, you might kind of maybe conquer the anxiety first, but then there's going to be some sort of, okay, uh, trough. Well, I was trying to implement this plan, but looks like it's not quite uh, working. And yeah, people just uh, don't pick it up or they are not interested in this particular uh, set of techniques, right? Then, okay, well, I'm at some sort of trough zone. Now I'm going to make improvements right so make adjustments to achieve a peak and then you get to the peak now okay what's next oh i'm missing some sort of detail right now somebody points that out so now i need to fix that so yeah there is going to be this uh, improvement uh, right but also there is going to be uh, the peaks and troughs even if uh, you conquer this kind of like initial fear of the challenge so that's something that we need to keep in mind so there will be positives and negatives along this uh, journey of like working and developing yourself along the lines of some challenging activity. Always, yeah. And how are we on time, by the way? Oh, so you're doing good. So it's now about 30 minutes. So yeah, I think we'll be wrapping this up. Anything else we would like to add? Go ahead. I think that'd be another challenge for me to overcome because what's that? I, oh, <laughs> I think I was able to cover up everything I wanted to cover. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that was the challenge of writing the scripts. So here's some behind the scenes for you, dear listeners. And yeah, so overall, I think we'll be continued we will continue to be sponsored by mental toughness so amongst many other free uh, sponsors you can find out as this john wick uh, coin says uh, it says ens ens causa sui i don't know if you can see but yeah there is a line and then basically it says everything is in within so that's one side and the other one it says 
ex unita vires. It's something in Latin again means something like uh, there is a strength in unity. So yeah, basically teamwork is important. So find yourselves some teams to work with. Teamwork is important with people and unity is also important within. Let's focus on unifying the body, the mind, the heart and soul. Good point. And if we unify all these, we'll be able to overcome any challenge that comes our way. Whether it's a mental, uh, academic challenge, let's say a physical challenge, exercising, going to the gym, a new sport, jujitsu, yeah. yeah. learning, teaching, and then lifting weights over time, running, yeah. multiple lifting example. weights, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And especially well. the challenges to the heart and soul. Yeah. Can always be defined by discipline, and will hopefully cover that up next in the following Becoming Limitless Part 3. Oh, that's exciting. We'll analyze how exactly those challenges that hit us really deep and hard are the toughest to come out of, but when we come out of them, we come out stronger. Yeah, exactly. We shall believe and achieve. Okay, well, uh, I think that's it, uh, everyone. So thank you for tuning in. We hope that you got some important information for yourselves, something applicable, and we'll keep pumping that content. Bye, everyone. Peace out.